Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P. Joe P. Zapia. That, of course, is Dan Harris. And today's guest is the Welsh. That's right, Chris Welsh from In This League. And as always, it's you. And it's week 17 on the waiver wire. And if you're putting waiver wire claims in this week, congratulations. In fact, I expect all of our listeners to be doing this because... I expect all of you to be playing for championships because you're part of our crew here at Fantasy Pros. So congratulations already for getting to the dance, especially after another crazy COVID week. Oh, that COVID, it sure is crazy, and it does lots of crazy things, not to mention all the other guys that got pulled from games or got hurt or a lot of other situations. But hopefully everybody had a wonderful holiday regardless, and hopefully everyone had a healthy holiday also. And we're very excited, as always, to be back and joining you here for this show. And Welsh, I know, you know, Christmas time's very busy, but I also know for you, you're a huge Marvel guy. And I can only assume by now you've seen Spider-Man, because, oh. again, you are a very big comic book guy. Yes, and sir. I thought it was very important to start the show with that. Forget spoilers. Of the three of us, how would you cast us as the different Spider-Man? Who is the Andrew Garfield? Who is the Tom Holland of this trio? And who is the Tobey Maguire Welsh? <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that you did the spoiler thing here. Um, that's a spoiler. Yeah, no it's spo- all over the internet for no, like three weeks. No, I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I'm taking the kids this week. I have managed to mute everything. The whole internet. I've muted the whole internet. I do not know spoilers. Please do not spoil anything on this podcast. All I'm saying okay. is there have been three people that have played Spider-Man. I understand. How would you cast so so this is interesting because uh, we're all old, so we're all kind of Tobey Maguire-ish. <laughs> okay, this is how I'm going to do it, and you're going to have to follow me, and it's not going to work because, you know, people are going to look at us and be like, what are you talking about? No, no, so it's here's not what about I would looks. go with. It's not about age. It's, no, it's it. about it. your personality, your emotional state more than anything. Well, okay, still, this, I know. Dan Harris is Tobey Maguire. Not just because he's clearly the oldest uh, here, and we haven't really thought about him for 20 or so years or anything like that. I'm not saying that. But <laughs> I would say Dan definitely has that kind of Tobey Maguire-ish mentality. Uh, probably has web shooters directly in his right, skin as well. Ones, right, yeah. yeah, He's the real deal. Joe, you have the Andrew Garfield personality, I okay. think. Andrew Garfield is very kind of like poppy needy? and fun and oh, maybe okay. needy, yeah, cries yeah. a decent amount, you yeah. know, drops his girlfriend, can't save him from falling off of buildings and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You could probably pull him a stone as well. But you have the Andrew, you also have the Andrew Garfield nose, I want to point out as well. Um, you definitely have the personality. The only problem is you don't have the big poof hair. So by default- I did though, I did it one time. So by default- that makes me the best Spider-Man of all of them, <laughs> Tom Holland. Clearly, the one that is involved with the Avengers. Maybe the most important character in the Marvel Universe now that, spoiler alert, Tony Stark isn't there. So only by default am I the greatest Spider-Man of all of them, uh, Tom Holland. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, I, I think that's very good, and I appreciate all the And I'm the youngest. TVs. And I'm the youngest of all of you. Even though I yes. don't look at it like in the video right now. No, you don't. I, I'm, I'm never aging. I'm I, look, I look worn. I look torn. You I are. I look better every single day, and both of you get older every single time I see you. Dan Harris, I hope that you had a, a lovely holiday. I know it was uh, berated by lots of Patriots talk with all of your your mm. uh, your wife's family and everything going on there. So I'm did sorry. you survive all of that Patriot Bills rivalry on Sunday? Well, I'm here, so I obviously am uh, still alive. Yes, I had a lovely Christmas, actually. I was I was teasing a little bit. It is with my wife's family, who I am very fond of, but there is always an inordinate amount of Patriots talk. So uh, I was glad. Damian Harris is awesome. He's I the mean, best three touchdowns. I don't know. This is what you do for your job, and you don't even understand that the Patriots are going to wipe the floor with the Bills <laughs> by 27 points. Get out of my house. That's basically what my Christmas was. And I did, and I left, and it was great. I just went to the Dunkin' Donuts down the street. But, yeah, it was great. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I love the Welsh. I'm one of the four people who can say that in the world. And uh, I'm ready to go. Let's win some championships for our 14 listeners who are still here. I love that the story ended at a Dunkin' Donuts. (laughs) What what could be more New England? And you know what? And it was really obnoxious. And then just to get out, just to get a little time to myself – I went to Dunkin' Donuts. That's what you did, of course. All right, before we start winning championships, and and hopefully there are a few guys here that can help us on that path, I want to remind everybody we have a few days left to give away that Alvin Kamara autographed jersey thanks to our friends at Pristine Auction. So head over to fantasypros.com slash contest and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not. 
Look, I'm telling you, every podcast is on there. The short for uh, short form videos, excuse me, the long form videos. We got live streams still to help you out. We're gonna have all of our draft coverage coming up pretty soon in the new year. We have amazing content there. Our dynasty coverage is there also. So it's football all year round over on YouTube. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that little notifications bell when you do. So you know every time a new piece of magical content drops and then screenshot that bad boy, head over to fantasypros.com slash contest and then you can be involved in that Alvin Kamara giveaway. Again, you only have a few days left. New Year's Eve, baby. That's right. The ball drops and that Alvin Kamara jersey goes away. So get involved there. Also, check out Trophy Smack too. And I'm going to uh, I'm an old guy as Welsh said, so I'm going to show you my trophy on, here. Ooh. Look at this right here from Trophy Smack. Pretty amazing uh, wow. stuff here. You can see it. This is why you subscribe to the YouTube channel. So you can see the gold. Uh, Joe Pizapia in gold. That's Ooh. right. It's beautiful here. Mr. Blackbook. Did you bring that last there. night to the wrestling event that you were at? Uh, you know what? Show? I should have brought it you to should've. the garden last night and should have hit somebody over the head with it. But you know what? <laughs> to me, I would rather win a belt than even money at this point. Unless we're talking enormous amounts of money. But I'm telling you right now. If you're trying to figure out how to reward everyone in your league and, or the people in your league who win the championship, it's got to be from Trophy Smack. So go check out Trophy Smack. They've got over a thousand different combinations available. You can customize it. You can put all the different names on it, the name of the league, and have different pictures. It's unbelievable what you can do there. And I know because I lost about two hours of my life once trying to design some belts for somebody. <laughs> And it is the most amazing thing. Plus, we're talking like real weight. You know, some of these things are like, oh, it's plasticky. No, no, no. I could knock a man out with this yeah. quite easily and maybe choke the life out of him with the rest of the belt. I'm just saying, if you had to, it can also be a device to protect yourself. So, so what Joe's saying is go into Publix, hit somebody with yeah. it, get on television and put up your belt so everyone yeah, can well, see where you I got mean, it from. Look, and, and say, look, I won my Fantasy League Championship. This is what you do, Welsh. Yeah, but I'm telling you right now, they're they're incredibly cool. They are, they're very um, established in terms of like what kind of quality you're getting. But Trophy Smack is awesome. And Trophy Smack is a fun way to celebrate the winners of your league. So please go check out our partners over there in Trophy Smack and get yourself a belt. And you know what? If your league won't get one for you and everyone won't chip in, buy yourself one. Because I told everybody, Dan, by the way, I know we're going long today in the intro. But you know Nobody what? Cares. It's week 17. Who cares? Nobody Dan cares. said, go 10 minutes, Joe. I don't care anymore. I'm just phoning it in here at the end of the year. That's what Dan Harris told me before the show. But Welsh, I told you if you won flex with Bogman, Jake Seeley, who's cheap, is only going to buy one belt. Yeah. I said I would buy the other belt for you. But here's the question. Did you advance to the championship? Nope, we are not going to. Very disappointed. Bogman and I were facing Joe Dolan in the semifinals. Ooh. We had everything going for us. And then James Robinson got hurt. <sighs> we lost DeAndre Hopkins. And Tyreek Hill caught about... 30 yards so uh, unfortunately we were very close goddard uh, everybody just crapped the bed for us and we're not going to move on and it is actually one of the you know i want to give you credit here you, to your point like i was kind of scoffy about the money thing unless it's big dollars the ability to celebrate in your friend's face to like take a picture of yourself you know what i would do if i had that belt and we won flex I would go around to des I might actually do traveling, travel around the country and take pictures of myself in that extra belt. Maybe me and Bogman would travel together, both like belts, that. and send it to Jake Seeley just so he knows two belts were purchased because we both won. <laughs> the ability to celebrate in your friend's face is completely underrated about being able to text and take pictures. I might find wrestlers and put my belt on them. The go. possibilities are endless, and I really wish I was doing it, but... Alas, I am not. One last thing for everybody, too. Uh, if you miss our dear friend Mike Deglier on the podcast this year, and I'm sure you all do, uh, we wanted to honor him and remember one more time as family that we have that Remembering Mike Tagliere collection still available at fancypros.com slash shop. So if you got some extra Christmas money laying around and you decided, you know what, uh, I like to remember my friend here who gave me such incredible entertainment and advice for so many years here at Fantasy Pros, all the proceeds from that uh, collection are donated to his family and mm. I know the GoFundMe page is still up and running too and a lot of people wanted to win leagues and donate the money which is a beautiful thing but if you head over to fantasypros.com slash shop uh, you can go ahead and search that remembering Mike Tagliere collection they have some cool tag strong shirts and hats and things like that and again all those proceeds go to Tag's family so do something nice for yourself do something nice uh, for the family here and uh, Fantasy Pros so remember our good friend Mike as I know you guys have to uh, during this holiday season, I know he's been on my mind quite a bit, as well as my friend Nate too. And uh, again, it's been a it's been a tough year, but uh, we're 
we're still going on and we're still going to remember our friends and celebrate how great they were, their contributions here to our industry. And Tags was about as good as it gets. I can tell you that much. All right. Now that all of that stuff is, uh, is out there, it's time to talk football, boys. Believe mm. it or not, there's still some guys out there on the waiver wire. At least I've been told. So let's start with the running backs here. Dan Harris, who is your number one running back off the board in the waiver wire for week 17 with all of the coconuts on the line? Uh, it's Dare Agun... Agunbawale. <laughs> I have never, never <laughs> once pronounced it correctly, and I say it every day. Agunbawale. Uh, yeah, it's for me, it's got to be him, um, just because he has the clearest path to having the you know highest number of touches and potentially fitting into your starting lineup, even in your championship week. And don't scoff, by the way. I'm about to get bounced by 0.4 points mm. because I started Marvin Jones over Rex Burkhead yesterday in a league. This is what matters. All those little decisions. Look, with James Robinson, as uh, Welsh just mentioned, obviously lost for the year. Carlos Hyde is already on IR. I, we don't even know who else is going to possibly factor in every uh, touch but one after Robinson went out there. Every snap, I'm sorry, but one after Robinson went out. The Patriots are obviously a very strong defense, and they're going to be very angry in this game, but they are more vulnerable against the run than the pass. I think you're probably going to see 20 touches for Agunvalli in this game. So he's number one, and if you are hurting, and again, the big thing here, Joe, what I really think about is, like, we're waiting for the COVID news, right? We're right. waiting for it. We're already, like, stressing out about Joe Burrow, right, because we've got Allen going on the COVID list. Like, we are just waiting for it. You may lose your top running back, your second running back, like getting running back depth at this point is critical. So Gunbowale for me is number one very clearly. Well, you're right. All jokes aside, this is a very important thing that Dan's talking about. I'm glad he highlighted it because I think it's worth stressing as well that we really should continue to be very proactive on the waiver wire this week. Just keep accumulating talent that may in some fashion potentially make it into your lineup. Don't just sit on the laurels because the next thing you know, you have half a dozen guys on your roster that might not be available because that's what's happened these last few weeks. And maybe you got lucky because you had a first round buy and maybe it didn't hit your team, but inevitably it's going to. Um, now, that being said, I think the Ag Agunbawale pick here, Dan, is really just a vendetta against your in-laws where you just want to start the guy against the Patriots this week, but whatever we'll we'll save i'll that do it later. from the dunking i'll be watching uh, the whole game i'll set on my, my lineup right from there i just <laughs> set it right from there look at it Ogboom, Ogboom Wally, whatever the hell his name is i'm gonna put him in my lineup all right uh welsh who you want to uh, pick off the wave of wire in uh that's a terrible boston accent by the way you know what i would 17. like though i What's actually that? would love i want one of those like man on the street segments in boston and i want just to go up to random people and say pronounce this name like <laughs> da, da, uh, i would love to hear like 10 different boston pronunciations of darian gumbawale that would be that would be a best time that that's a really how we should be celebrating and putting effort into our uh, week 17 of the the football season but i like i i get the Dari one actually one of the things i think that's fun about this week is there's so many options it feels like there's more options this week than there have been in quite some time I'm going to go with, uh, as we affectionately call him on ITL, uh, we call him AKA Boston, AKA Bogman Scott. We call him mm -hmm. Bogman Scott. I'm going to go with Boston Scott on this one. Miles Sanders, uh, the news came out that he broke his hand. Obviously, they do have a bunch of options. We've seen, we've seen Kenny Gainwell like jump in randomly. We've seen Jordan Howard run with it. But Boston Scott was given uh, some of the red zone opportunity. Philly just absolutely murderballing it, and Washington giving up a bunch of points. We've seen a decent amount of carries be given. We've actually seen Boston Scott hit double digit carries in five different games this year with Miles Sanders out of the picture. Boston's offense really seems to be running. I like this one. I think the matchup is the best. And part of the problem we are facing as well is a lot of the waiver wire options have really bad matchups this week. Mm -hmm. Dare has got New England. Uh, Rex Burkhead, who's going to be out there for a lot of people who I think is setting up to be a big disappointment, has got the San Francisco 49ers. One of the better ones might be, uh, I think Derek Gore is right in that uh, mix as well. I really like him. But I'm going to go with uh, AKA Bogman Boston Scott because I think you're going to get 15 plus touches. Washington defense looks super suspect right now. And I think a touchdown is in the future as they keep rolling. So give me Boston Scott. You know, Boston Scott was my number one as well, Welsh, for the same reasonings that you put out there. Agumbo Wale's matchup against the Patriots give me... Well, it's such a week-to-week -week league, right? I mean, every week something happens and we go, okay, and we overreact sometimes to it. And I do believe that after this past week, the defense looks, let's face it, New England's defense played down for the first time in many, many weeks. And it was not good. So I expect them to bounce back. And if I do, that's my concern also, not to mention... 
you know, just because the Jaguars look good moving the football against the Jets at times, let's not copy and paste that to Week 17. Dan, I know you've got lots of feelings because I can tell by your face. What do you want to say? I always have many feelings. Uh, I guess a couple things I'll say is, number one, the Patriots defense, again, is very good, but it's an elite pass defense, and it's a decent run defense. You know the only other thing is if the Jaguars are ever able to make it near the goal line, they're not going to let Trevor Lawrence throw a touchdown pass because that doesn't happen. Uh, it's going to be a Goomba Wally getting the carry, so he's got a decent chance to touchdown. And again, he's going to get 20 touches in this game. That's going to cure a lot of ills. I'm not... I'm not I'm not going to the mat for everybody out there to start Dario Gumawale. My issue with Scott I think and this, you are. I, I think I, you're that's right. Exactly I am. What you're doing? Here. Go, go yeah. do it. But here's my the one thing. So Scott is my number two. I do have a question for you all, and I'll ask Welsh first since he brought it up. Jordan Howard suffered a stinger in this most recent game, which is part of the reason why Scott got as much work as he did, and probably why he got the touchdown. Let's assume it is just in fact a stinger, which is not going to keep Howard out for this game. Both guys going into this game healthy against Washington. Do you prefer Scott or do you prefer Howard? I prefer Boston Scott. Yeah, I'm okay. Boston Scott over him. I think he's still going to get the majority. The thing I do worry about is if we do get into a place of the in we're getting in the red zone, specifically inside the five. I do worry that Jordan Howard comes in, but yep. he's just he's been ineffective. And I will take that matchup Ooh. in a fifteen. Let's call it like uh, fourteen to sixteen touches because Boston Scott can also get a little bit in the receiving game. And we've seen this team move away from just completely exiting from Kenny Gainwell, and that's going to be a big question if there's no receiving back Boston Scott will become that back if they activate Gainwell then we're in a diciness of all three of those guys but I'm still gonna I'm gonna stick this week straight on with Boston Scott that I think he's more the explosive he's the all back where you've got Gainwell in receiving and Jordan Howard inside the five I'm gonna stick with Boston Scott though so I would go and that that's the thing for me is that if Howard is healthy I will go with Howard because I do think that Howard was the guy who was going to get the majority of the work here in this game Scott was factoring in but I do think Howard, and again, you know, Welsh, you call them ineffective. He's been, in my opinion, very effective this entire yeah. year. Like, yeah. but he's averaging, I mean, I know YPC is whatever, stupid, but it's 5.1 yards per carry. Like, he has not been a zero. He has been effective. I mean, 12 for 57, 17 for 71, 12 for 83, 10 for 63, 15 for 69, and 9 for 37 in his game so far. That's effective. They like him. Now, for me, the reason why I do right now at this moment have Scott ahead is because of the fact that, yeah, okay, you suffer a stinger, and most people are like, well, it's a stinger. He'll probably be back. But I'm not confident necessarily that he's going to play in this game or that he yeah. would not re-injure himself. So that's why I have Scott. If it comes out that Howard's totally fine, good to go, full practices, and we know this before waivers run, I will move Howard ahead of Scott personally because I do think he's going to mm. have more value coming in against Washington. You know, Dan, which makes – I just want to throw in real quick. Yeah, what sure. makes us all interesting as we're picking apart these guys is like – if CEH is out, Derek Carr, what if Derek, is Derek Carr becoming maybe one of the more or, exciting guys? Derek Carr. I'm sorry, no, Derek, Derek Carr. Derek, Derek, Derek Carr is not Derek Carr. Great Derek back. Carr. I would is love to see that. I would love to see any car at running back. I, was, I he, wouldn't. He, I would. His brother, any of David Carr, get all the cars. A in physical there. car might be nice, but not any of the Derek. <laughs> uh, but uh, Derek Gore, is yeah. Derek Gore more exciting? I mean, if you pace all these guys out, if you want to go from a pure touch standpoint and not get like inside football, Dare might be number one. And then Burkhead for touches might be number two. And then it looks like there's a clump between the rest yeah. of these guys where Howard and Scott are eating into each other. Derek Gore, it's a little bit in question on how they would work him against Daryl Williams because it's gone both ways. But Derek, I mean, Derek Gore was super effective. Is there a default here that you fall into? As Because uh, we're picking apart all these really great waiver wire options. Can, you, can we talk ourselves out of the Philly situation because there's too much going on with it? Maybe even the Chiefs situation. Does anybody feel good about Rex well, Burkhead? Let me, let me ask you this, because I, I think this is also the time of year where, you know, we have to take our fantasy, put it aside for a second, talk real football, because real football matters to these teams. So let's start with yeah. the Eagles. Dan, are the Eagles a playoff team, in your opinion? And do you think that there's pressure to push the older Jordan Howard to play in this game despite the injury? And if the answer to that question is yes, then I can understand the case maybe for Jordan Howard, not maybe right 1A with Boston Scott. And I think that's the first question. Then we'll get to the Clyde edwards alaire slash Derek Gore one or Derek Carr, whoever else wants to talk about next. Whoever. But Dan, what, you, what about the Philadelphia Eagles? In your opinion, is this matchup here against Washington a pressurized one for them where they feel like, well, we kind of need Jordan Howard active for this game? 
Well, I think that uh, every game has kind of been a playoff game here for the Eagles because right. they they got off to such a bad start. So I do think they view it like that. I don't think that means they're going to necessarily push Jordan Howard if he's not ready to go. I think they're going to do what they think is in the best interest of their football team. And from everything I have seen from this team, they think that the best interest of their football team, when Jordan Howard and Boston Scott is healthy, is to give it to Jordan Howard over Boston Scott. And, you know, Wells, you did bring up a good point, which is Scott leaves so much on the table right now in the passing game, and they're, they're not utilizing him in that mm-hmm. way very much, but they can because that's what he's shown so much in the past. So that does give him a nice floor. But especially for right now, I think they're just going to do, Joe, I don't think they're going to be like, oh, man, we have to win this game against the Washington team that now I think is finally mercifully falling apart. I don't think they're going to be well, too much. that was mu- pretty embarrassing. Like, that, I, I mean, it was. This is kind of a win now, like have to win situation. Like you've got can to beat you win down division. I guess I can think you win you not full strength against Washington. Of I think well, here's one yes. interesting thing: uh, the Philadelphia on the, the, it's the CBS local on their website, one of their articles points out that um, yes, Howard had the stinger on Sunday, and they point out that he had a similar injury a couple years ago that had forced him to miss time. Correct. So they are speculating that this could be a significant time misser. Regard because I don't think the Eagles are going to sit there and be like, hey guys. Jordan Howard's out. How do we figure this out? They're going to be like, right. no, it is boss. They are plug and play. They, I don't think right. Jordan Howard or, or Miles Sanders or Boston Scott, any of them are critical to this, but it looks very likely with that stinger, if they're going to be making any type of run, that you let him sit out and you go Gainwell and Boston Scott. And if that's the case, if it is those two, Gainwell is interesting because we've seen him pop in a game, but Boston Scott is the volume play. And it's probably from a maybe like a, prop betting uh, perspective, a Jalen Hurts game where Jalen Hurts is going to pick up more of the slack maybe than anybody else. Uh, but Boston Scott, I think that's what I think that's what we're leading to and right. why in my eyes and Joe, maybe yours, that he's the number one guy this week and the guy that I would put my fab on. It's the age of Jordan Howard that concerns me with the injury. It's it's not always yeah. injuries. Sometimes it's age and injury, that combination. And also looking ahead of the schedule, week 18 is against Dallas. That is a huge game here for Philadelphia. I think Philly can beat Washington not at 100%, but I think you want everybody 100% or close to it in Week 18 against Dallas. So it would not shock me that even if Howard was a go, that maybe you're just kind of like just a little careful with him. And that would be the worst case scenario because I think I think Dan Harris has said is right, which again, I hate saying those words, but I said it anyway, whereas he has been very good when he's been on the field. The trouble is... Do you want to push him in this event where you know, and I know teams get caught looking ahead sometimes, but they very well should be looking ahead because I think Dallas is that tougher matchup. I want to ask you about Gore because Gore is actually my number two. And I'm a little concerned about where I have him because for me, the question is, was his involvement large in part because of the combination of Clyde edwards helaire injury? So many guys like Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey missing practice time and not being part of what is the playbook we're going to run and what is this, the, the plan that we're going to roll out there? Or is this maybe the guy that we've seen him a few times already now have games like this? So what do you make of him, Dan Harris? Where you have Gore in your rankings this week, I'm just curious. Yeah, so he is fifth among the running backs. Okay. Um, I think he's a viable pickup, but I do have him behind Agumba Wale, behind both Philadelphia guys, and behind Rex Burkhead, who, again, I don't want to start. Of all time, right? I don't want to start against San Francisco, but you can't ignore a guy who gets 15 touches every single week. I think if Derek Gore was going to be the primary running back, and I, we can all assume that CH is out, right? We haven't heard anything as we record this. Yeah, I that's, that's what I'm doing. All right, yeah. so let's assume he's out. Um, if I knew that Daryl Williams was somehow caught the flu or COVID or something and was not able to play, Gore is top, without question. Like, there's no even remote consideration for me. He's number one with a bullet. But look, the bottom line is this. He'll get work, and he might get work around the goal line, but Daryl Williams has proven himself to be more than capable. They trusted him around the goal line even before CH got injured initially. In early in the season, he was factoring in more about the goal line. He'll factor in more in the passing game. So it's going to be really hard for me to see too much. I, I don't think they're going to blow out the Bengals, right? I mean, the Bengals are, are playing well. They'll probably hang with them, at least offensively. So this doesn't strike me as a let's get the backup guy in. They want to win. They want to take down uh, the number one seed, obviously, in the AFC. I think Darrell Williams will probably, it'll be like a... 75 25 split or a 65 35 split to me that is what keeps gore as the lowest guy here because i just can't rely on the volume in this game all right so just to be clear too let's get a straight ranking here and then we'll go back to welsh so give me your 
your ranking of all these five guys, because really there's five, let's be honest with it. It's Scott, Gore, Burkhead, yep. Howard, Agunbowale. So of those five, what's your ranking and, and I guess your priority? I mean, look, there's no fab left next week, so you're blowing it all this week on some of these guys. So how do you rank them out? By the way, I just want to put it in there. Rappaport just right now tweeted out, good news following tests about CEH. There is swelling, but no structural damage. And the injury is not season ending, source source said. He should return shortly. Now, I still read that as you're out this week. I still 100%. read that at, thousand uh, out this week. Okay, very good. I just wanted to put that out there as that just came across. Sorry, Joe, were you asking me for my top five or were you asking Welsh? I don't know, you. I actually oh, wanted to. wonderful. Yours. I'm sorry. I, mean, I was so distracted. Take it while you can get it because it ain't going to last I, I long. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so I do have Ogumba Wale, number one, Boston Scott, number two, and Jordan Howard, number three. Those are my top three overall, by the way, just to spoil alert. And they're alert. a tier for you, that three. They are a tier for me because I could see starting any of them this week in my playoffs. Like, in my finals, if I absolutely have to. And I'm not kidding, Joe. We are the Fantasy Pros Dynasty Invitational League. Hopefully, unless Alvin Kamara goes absolutely insane tonight, I'm going to make the finals against Justin Boone. I am yeah. dead at running back. Dead. I am going to – and I, I have a lot of fab left. It's all going to a good boy right now. Howard's already on my team. That's where I'm at. I, I'm going to be starting him, and I think you can. Fourth, then, is Burkhead, and then Gore is fifth for me. It's not that huge a difference, really, but I do think that the top three guys are the guys who I'm going after this week. Well, I was on Boone's show last week, and I told him, I said, you want Dan Harris to get to the finals and then beat him. You don't want <laughs> him to lose correct. ahead of time. It's if true. you're going to do it, do it the right way. Correct. Uh, and look, last time Alvin Kamara played a game around Christmas, we all know what happened last year. Yeah, that's true. So uh, hold our breath tonight for that. Welsh, what's your ranking of these running backs this week here? Give me your top five of these backs, because I think this is crucial here, as so many teams now are trying to figure out this position who have made it to this championship and might just be looking for their backups or maybe even flex guys or maybe even RB2s, as Dan's talking about. I've got, uh, so from uh, one to five, I've got Boston Scott, number one. I've got Derek, Car- uh, Derek, I say Derek, again, Derek <laughs> Gore. Der- I really want to say, this is going to be what? a this drinking be a sign. game. This What's with that sign? guy Welsh? Why doesn't he know Derek Carr's a quarterback? I don't understand. What's it's not problem? that many Derek's. I just, Derek Carr, apparently. Derek Gore, number right. uh, two. I've got Dare, number three. And then I'm going Howard and Burkhead. I really think, as, as exciting as Burkhead was, I just think it's going to be a mirage and people really setting yourself up for failure I, by I putting him back in, especially against the San Francisco 49ers. But there's so many bad matchups. So one thing that is interesting as like a comparison against Gore and Daria Gumbawale, I find is Gumbawale is on an incredibly horrendous offense against a really bad matchup defensively. And Derek Gore is on an incredibly great offense in uh, you know a, a dicey but it's such a great offense a defensive matchup when Derek Gore gets 10 touches he scores over 10 points in PPR it has happened three times this right. year that he's got over 10 touches and he has scored over 10 points whether it's been a touchdown or he has been a factor in the receiving game and what we just saw out of Cincinnati do you not think what is the over under early I'll bet you it is set at at least 52 for the Cincinnati uh, Kansas City game it's got to be Looking it up. Have, Go ahead. Okay. I'm I'll bet it you right it now. is over 50. I would it say is going to be three and a half would be the number I put on that. Bet it's going to be gun toting. And in the past game, both Daryl and Derek Gore are involved in it. So I think if you can count, and again, you got to play your shots here. If Daria Gubala, you think is going to get 20 touches and you think he's a little bit, uh, the New England defense is a little bit susceptible. What's your upside play? If you think the upside play is in the 20 uh, point scored. Okay. But if you can tell Ooh. yourself you are going, Oh, is it going to be lower than 50? Am Low. I hitting the over? What is it? Oh, 49 and a half. Slam that over. If you think <laughs> if you think Derek Gore is going to get 10 touches in this game, then you know you are going to get 10 plus fantasy points with more upside, especially if it's a shootout. I I mean, I'm talking myself even more into if we get a dicey situation in the Eagles side that Derek Gore yeah. could be number one. But if I'm spinning my fab, it's Scott, especially with thinking that how that uh, Jordan Howard could be out and Derek Gore, knowing we know Der- uh, CH is going to be out, that I need 10 touches to at least get my double digit points. I think those are the two plays and the matchups work in their favor where the others, they really don't. Burkhead uh, and um, and uh, Dari Gubwale don't like the defensive matchups and don't like the offense. So Give me Gore and Scott at the top. All right, let's move on to wide receivers. And I got to tell you, Welsh, I'm, if anything was screwing up Gore's name, I thought you would have called him Frank Gore, being the 49er fan that you are. like that It's the would first the, name thing. It's always the first name thing the first that name follows thing? the, the right. screwy thing. All right, well, let's move on to wide receivers here, and let's talk about the top of the list. Welsh, we'll start with you with this one. 
who is your number one wide receiver ad this week? Oh, man. I mean, can we go back a week where we could just say Amon Ross St. Brown? Can we just talk about him? <laughs> like, oh, only him. Yeah. I'd feel really yeah, comfortable uh, about uh, it. Um, Okay. If this is one way down on this list here. If we are out, and I'm assuming we are going to be without Cole Beasley, and we are going to also be without Gabriel Davis, mm -hmm. I am going to go back to the well on uh, Isaiah McKenzie. I don't know if he's number one, but I want to tell you, with the double-digit target share that he got, me and Bogman mm -hmm. just talked about this on the Inside Football Podcast, and he's so against me on this. He's like, oh, it's a mirage. It's one week. But we know Beasley's going to be out because he's out for two games. It might be a necessity, Welsh. Yeah, no, Gabriel hold Davis. On, hold on, Do we know that Beasley is out? We know. I think we know Davis is out. Do we know that Beasley? Because Davis tested positive later in the week, right? And, and so well, he's got to miss the But Beasley's got to miss two. chance to test out. Does but, he's also, also... No, but he's got to miss two. I think that's what they said. He's automatically missing two. Like, just like Darius Leonard is going to miss 10 days, which spans over the two games. I mean, but I could I be... I don't know, Be Beasley... I, and I could be wrong. I'll try to look it up while you're talking. My Here's yeah. the thing. I've been operating... Davis tested... Uh, positive so late and he's Friday, not vaccinated right? Was it that his 10 days go past next week he's out Beasley I wasn't sure because he tested positive so early in the week whether or not his 10 days is up by Sunday so it could I'm be sorry. close go ahead no go no on. it's a great it's a great point because I'm super conditional on Isaiah McKenzie like mm -hmm. he's way down this list of what we're looking at if Davis and um and Beasley are both out. I I don't know if McKenzie goes to number one, and I'll give you the rank here in a second, but I think he is in the top two or three based on the share and the matchup, the too, that Buffalo has. The 22nd is when Cole Beasley... So that would take him out till January 2nd, which would be on Monday. Right. Okay. So he is out. So he is out. Uh, Gabriel Davis is out. Isaiah McKenzie, the guy, and he got a double-digit target share, and Buffalo's going up against Atlanta? You yes. have something? Okay. So, no, you no, look like you were going to say the something. The 22nd, I think 10 days gets you to January 1st. Which would which be is Saturday. Saturday? That's why. No. I'm, but again, I, I'm lo trying to look it up, and I'm so sorry if I'm taking our, our listeners off to a detour because I've been well, No, it's a good thing. You're making a great point, though, because I have been debating McKenzie as well. It's not out of left field right now. I have been debating whether or not I want to put him one, too. And I've been trying to figure this out, and I, I, I think. Bottom line is this, even if he's eligible to come off, doesn't mean he is going to come off. And we already know that Gabriel Davis is out well. So your point pretty much remains. Keep going. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit different. Uh, like, I think when you get Beasley back, if you get Beasley back, I think the upside, what I like about McKenzie is if you don't have Davis and Beasley, you're going to have a high share upside where this is a guy that I think is going to be throwing the ball at least eight times if Beasley's in it might be minimal I think you're still going to get five to six targets but you know Beasley's going to get a lot of the share it is either way it's against a horrific defense that the Bills are going to shred and they're going to put points on and that's why I really like it I think Bateman is near the top as well um whichever quarterback is going in that direction they've got the Rams and Jalen Ramsey should be locked up on uh, Marquise Brown and I think it's a good matchup for Bateman so I would look at this as a Bateman, McKenzie, and I'm going to throw Marcus Valdez-Scantling if he's back as well for the deep option. He was really going before uh, he was knocked out with COVID for a little bit. Those would be the top three that I'm looking at because I think some of the other top guys that are out there have really poor matchups. Guys like uh, with Carol. I mean, we were debating not starting DJ Moore this week with how Carolina is working. So I don't got, like guys like Robbie Anderson. I don't necessarily like the New England wide receivers. So I'm going to go uh, Bateman, McKenzie if Beasley is out and Marquez Valdez Scantling. That's fair. Uh, for me personally, I've got KJ Osborne still in that, and he's 31% rostered. Rashad Bateman, those are the two that I think you can add. Uh, uh, McKenzie's interesting for sure. I mean, there's no way that that's not an interesting play, especially in a deeper league, you know, because that's a guy where you're always looking for names, and sometimes when you're playing in a 14 team league, right? These names that we talk about don't even exist anymore. Like, they're already on teams, already rostered. McKenzie's a guy that's definitely not. <laughs> you're almost 0.7% roster. Right. Right is now. that it? <laughs> is yeah. that it? So yeah. he's actually available. So if those circumstances, and I also love how Dan went all the way around the Beasley thing just to then come back around and say, but yeah, he's a good play anyway. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That. No, look, you see what he did I want, there? I know. I'm hold teasing. On. The bottom you. line, though, is no, it's true because yeah. I have actually been trying to find uh, information as to whether or not, because we know Gabriel Davis, we know Mike Williams, for example, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, is going to be out because of when they tested right. positive. I thought Beasley was only definitely out for one game and had the chance, but I, I can't find 
definitive one way or another because if he is out though i agree mckenzie probably vaults to number one just because of what we've well, seen here, here. here's another point too and and again take this for what you want if he's not available to practice all this week leading up once again you're game planning you're having people involved in things you have certain plays you want to run this is look this is football one-on-one right right you have practice time because you have a package of plays that you want to run against a specific team McKenzie's going to be involved in those practices. Yeah. And I think that's the that's the bigger point, too. It's not even can Beasley play. Of course, he's Cole Beasley. He's been in the league forever. I get all that. But at the same time, when you're out of out of sync a little bit or you're not there in some of those packages that they put out specifically, it can hurt a guy's ability to return fantasy value. And it's something that you see from time to time. It's not like everybody's Antonio Brown where he could not play football for three years and show up and catch 10 balls for 120 yards. I mean, right. that is a whole other set of circumstances, but that's and, and, it's something to consider. What's interesting about him as well is I actually don't think like what we're talking about running backs, running backs will uh, lead the day. They're going to lead the day in, in waiver wire and fab. So I actually believe so many of these wide receivers are actually going to be later day, Wednesday and Thursday pickups. It's not going to be a lot of waiver most, wire stuff. Yeah. I don't think most of these guys are in a waiver perspective. So what's nice about a guy like Isaiah McKenzie is I think he falls way under the radar regardless. If you want to wait it out a little bit, if you've got some positional stuff you don't need to screw with that you can go and pick him up after the fact on some of these guys. Because I think guys like KJ Osborne, if they're still out there, over 30% owned uh, fantasy pro shows. Bateman, just around 30%. And Robbie Anderson, these are all guys that are over 30% owned. So who are the next guys? Maybe the... Tonys or the Hiltons or, you know, if someone falls into like Braxton Berrios because he had the return he, or Byron Pringle uh, for that fact. I don't yeah. think Isaiah McKenzie is in that radar where you're going to be able to just slide in. You don't need to make a massive decision. Right. You may have COVID decisions that may, how many, how much time did you guys spend dropping oh. guys on your IR on Friday oh. and Saturday oh. and going and that. looking at just trying to make the rankings last week. Yeah. Every time I, th- every time I would publish a ranking, I would go to my phone and then somebody else would be out and I have to adjust everything again. And I was like, at a certain point, I was like, look, I'm just going to give it a couple hours and just wait and see and just do them all at once. So That's maybe how here, bad it was. So maybe here's my suggestion to everybody and how, and I think, Dan, you kind of like McKinsey like I do. Here'd be my suggestion. If you can find a way, get him on your roster because guess what's going to happen? If Cole Beasley is uh, ruled out, McKenzie will not be available on your wire anymore. And I think he is a double digit target potential against the Atlanta Falcons. So go pick him up if you have the potential to and stash him, especially if you've got COVID issues or you've got bench spots that you're not going to utilize because this is it. This is the last week. If you have two defenses because you're streaming, pick the one you want, dump the other, and pick up a guy like McKenzie, especially if you could foresee a scenario where you start him and just get ahead of the curve. Dan, how do you see the wide receiver board week 17 in terms of your investments and when you would make them? Um, I mean, I I think the short answer is I'll make them whenever I know that I need to get them. Like, if I know that my opponents right now are not looking that way and they don't have much bench room or they're not able to pick them up, I'll wait for whatever. But if I'm like, man, the other three guys remaining, because you assume, right, you're in a championship Mm -hmm. game and you got the third place game, so there are probably four teams remaining at this point. I'll get him whenever I need to get him at this point. McKenzie is going to be interesting because if Beasley is does have this Saturday day where he can clear, we're not going to know if Beasley's going to play until Saturday anyway. Right. So exactly. people may be completely ignoring McKenzie. The only, by the way, downside I will say is that they are 14 and a half point favorites, the Bills, by the way, which I'm looking at over at bettingpros.com, which shows us all mm. the books. The consensus odds are 14 and a half. Not sure how many targets we're going to need to see here, uh, you know, in this game. They might win it uh, in a walk pretty easily. But regardless, I like that. There is a guy. Osborne is my number one just because I think Thielen, he tried to come back after that. Yeah, you see, know, that's why Osborne's my number one. Right. Too, and again, the Thielen is the dicey. Thielen. The, the Thielen is what's holding me back on. Uh, because when Thielen's out, Osborne is great. But yes. do you think we're, are you done with Thielen? I think you got to add Osborne anyway. Yeah, just so I, somebody else doesn't against you. And then if you want to, <laughs> Thielen's playing, you drop him over, you don't want to play Osborne, it's different. But I feel like the investment is a good one because you want to in- ensure your own lineup and also protect, you know, from somebody else potentially playing him against can I, you. Can I, well. I, you're going to break these down. Isaiah McKenzie with Beasley out or Osborne with Thielen in? Who do you want? Oh, that's interesting. McKenzie. Yeah. I want McKenzie. Then Osborne, if Thielen is in, I don't want Osborne. Like, this is what I, happens okay. when you have three people who host shows professionally. <laughs> yeah, 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 All yeah, we do is ask each other questions. <laughs> I, I'm the guest and, and not I do answer this, anything. I this is really <laughs> not helpful, I love guys. it. It's a great, it's a great question, though. I'm, I'm I actually just, the bottom line for me is, like, when you see a guy who missed a couple of games with an ankle injury, comes back, gets tackled in, didn't look like a horrible tackle, and is pounding the ground and tries to come back in and can't, 
I can't imagine he's going to play here against the Packers. And if not, I realize that Osborne disappointed against the Bears, but that was really more of a Kirk Cousins thing. You know they'll need points against the Packers. So for me, if we know that Thielen is out, I would go with Osborne. If Thielen is in, then no, I'll take my chances with McKenzie, probably regardless, just because I think there's a chance that McKenzie has value even with Beasley in. Because remember, we were happy with Gabriel Davis even with Beasley in, right? Like we were recommending Gabe Davis as a pickup even with Beasley in. So even if Beasley is in, you could still see starting McKenzie, even though I wouldn't be running out to do it. But there is one guy who nobody is mentioning. Joe, I looked at our waiver wire article, which again takes the consensus waiver wire rankings for the wide receivers. Usually if I have a guy ranked at a spot, one of you guys, you or Yates or or Pat is kind of near me. I'm completely out on the island, I guess, with Joshua Palmer. And I get that it's a bad matchup against Denver. I completely understand that. And I get that he didn't have a huge game here, but I mean, this was just a bizarro game for the Chargers. Keenan Allen didn't have a good game here. Mike Williams is out. That is one of the ones Mm -hmm. that we do know because he's unvaccinated and because he's got to be out for 10 days when he tested positive. So we know Palmer is going to kind of, again, step into that role. And yeah, not a huge game, but six targets caught five of them, 43 yards, did catch the late touchdown. You're going to give me the number two receiver for a guy catching passes from Justin Herbert? I get the matchup's bad, but for me, that's a guy I'll take on my roster. And everybody else is ranking him like, ah, my 10th wide receiver, my 8th wide receiver. I'll take him with the McKenzies and the Osbournes of the world, personally, despite the matchup. I want I to throw this in real Palmer before the show, actually. Before we started, I was looking. I was like, you know what? I'll move him up there. Oh, Where did you have right. him? I think I have him at eight right now. Actually, of wide receivers, that's where I have him. So I have oh, him Right now, it's... I have him. I, right now, I have him, too. Ahead of it's the, well, and I understand oh, why, wow. but that secondary yeah. is very good in Denver. And I think uh, the IDP ahead, well, guy in me comes out when I see it and I go, I go, oh, wow, Palmer, you know, this could be something. And I look, who's he playing this week? Denver. Ooh, don't love that necessarily. Yeah. The corners are really good there. And only thing I, was... I will also say Drew Locke is probably going to be starting again, as we heard earlier today. Oh. And if so, then the, the Chargers probably need six points to win the game. So they may not have to air it out very much, right? Mike Zimmer on Monday said uh, that Adam Thielen is a little bit sore but he remains hopeful that Thielen is going to play against the Packers. So just throwing that out, you know, yeah, if you're piecing yeah. the coaching stuff out there, uh, that he's a bit sore and they're hopeful that he's going to get to go. So just to the Thielen stuff. Yes. There yeah. you go. That's All fair. Right. But anyway, I, I'm I'm taking my chance. Uh, again, if we knew, by the way, that either uh, MVS was coming back or MVS was out, then MVS or Alan Lazard might move up a little bit. They're four and five right now. Because I do think Great whoever point. the second the second wide receiver is for the Packers makes a big difference um, and can be a guy who you could start. Right now I'm four or five, but if we hear about that, one of them might move up a little bit. I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be my next question is how you feel about MVS and Lazard. Let, let's yep. say you know you put them both out there for you, Welsh. Is there one you prefer one over the other? Oh, yeah, it's MVS. I'm I'm big MVS. I mean, he had that really good run before he was out. He had a two-game stretch where he had 19 targets uh, between those two. He had a three-game stretch with those, which was 24 targets, really starting to get his share back in. He's big play. Aaron, much to my dismay, uh, Bogman and I made a big old Tom Brady MVP bet early in the year, and much to my dismay, Aaron Rodgers has moved into the favorite. He is absolutely yep. slinging the ball, and MVS has been a part of it. He's a big play option. They're not going to give him that award. I, I, that's what I said. That's what I... I I've been saying the for immediate, oh, immediate, there is immediate no, award. They're not going to give him that award. I, that was my argument I, two I, weeks I, ago on ITL, Joe, is there's no chance in the world that whatever Aaron Rodgers does, I said he could throw 50 touchdowns. Mm-hmm. There's no way that the big Jays Ooh. will give him that award because of his personal stances regardless. And guess what? Stances. It's not a personal stance. It's lying about your personal stance. That's the well, thing. Look, this isn't a political show here. But look, if you're going to talk about MVP candidates right now, what we'll turns into a hot BP take show right now, it's a media award, yeah. which means that it has nothing to do. There's plenty of guys. Dan just mentioned this person's unvaccinated. You, just, you have to follow different protocols if you're vaccinated or not. Do you have your rights to not be vaccinated in this country? Uh, and at the same time, you also do not have your rights to lie about it. That's the problem. The problem yeah, the, is you lie about it, you're breaking the protocols. And that puts other people in danger, potentially, in lots of different situations. So, again, uh, this is not a political I, statement. This is just a truth statement. And I think when you go from here now, you look at an MVP and you say, is the media going to 
reward him for being disingenuous about his circumstances. No. And I don't think that's going to be Disingenuous is a good word for it because I think there's a difference. We have what lying is, and that's Antonio Brown. He faked it. Antonio <laughs> Brown is the biggest culprit of culprits. Aaron Rodgers, the team knew. Like, that's the difference. Like, he misled the media with it, but the and team... The and the award, Welsh? No, no, but that's what I... Again, right. I'm the one that's saying, like, I told Bogman, there is no chance on the planet Aaron Rodgers could throw for 400 touchdowns. There's no chance chance and that's what screwed up at everything whether it's uh hall of fame balloting in major league baseball or this is the media takes a bias to something mm -hmm. and they don't look at what the award is and that's what's going to happen they will not look at what the award is and maybe aaron Rodgers is really going to deserve it my wallet hopes he doesn't uh but uh there's no chance because of a personal stance they will do it and his isn't the same situation as antonio brown but here's the problem it's also not like you know cole beasley comes off as kind of a jerk uh, or an ass about it but he's like honest about whatever his take is on it there's no chance the media gives it to him but guess what i looked on uh one of the sites aaron Rodgers was minus 175 for the award Jonathan Taylor and Tom Brady were plus 600. That's a discrepancy in the That's betting crazy. world right now between the award. And I don't see how the, there's no chance. There actually might be one of the best betting opportunities you've ever had in your life to go and take Jonathan Taylor and Tom Brady right now yeah. at plus six to 750. One of them, Tom yep. Brady's 750. Yeah, there's DraftKings no 750. chance that they give it to Aaron Rodgers. I will be shocked. We have to do an emergency show if it By happens. By the way, every, no way. every single cheesehead is going to come after you after the show. Also, Dan Harris, I, I will offer a counterpoint. Yeah, I'll say Dan Harris, go ahead. Aaron Rodgers is going to win the MVP. There's my counterpoint. <laughs> but, okay. I, but, but, but again, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve I, it. I, I, I'm, I'm fine with Aaron Rodgers. I'm not about deserve, although he does deserve it in my humble opinion. Aaron Rodgers is going to be, what I'm saying, the MVP of this season, in my opinion, because I think – to be here, yeah, I mean, back you want to, to back, talk you think they're going to go too with him? Yes, I do. And I, I, I guys, I they don't love doing that saying. either. They're not big fans. Historically. I, I completely understand everything everybody is saying. I understand that the media, it is a media driven award. It is why when we do the sports book league from the FSGA, mm -hmm. I love coach of the year award because it's like 90% narrative and it's like 10% coaching, which is why Bill Belichick never wins it. Right. I understand narrative media awards. It's what they're going to do. And maybe they will hold a grudge against them because they feel misled or whatever. Maybe. I just think at this point, especially with Brady's last couple of games here, I just don't see how you keep it out of that guy's hands. And I think oh, I the do. media you will lose recognize to Minnesota okay. next week. That's yeah. very right. Crazy. But no they cheese won't. Should, and no cheese head should come after me, by the way, because my argument is not about Rodgers as a whole. I'm, I, I like Aaron Rodgers. He wanted to play for the 49ers. He's a cow guy. I like him. I have no issue. He deserves it. My thing is a media thing. And it's just funny that you said that because there's no chance in hell I think the media will vote for him the same way that Barry Bonds is not the greatest baseball player statistically of every time. It's all that argument. There's the oh, same reason that that happened. I would vote for him in a second. Here, here's, a no here's a question, Dan. How can you say that they're not going to lose to Minnesota when last year they lost to Minnesota in Green Bay? Uh, you're right. Uh, I, I think what I'm Let's not pretend like Minnesota isn't no, the no, no, perfect no. gem right. to go in there to Green Bay and all of us look at each other and go, oh, that, and that version perfect, of the Vikings It's the perfect spot week. for Minnesota to do it, right? <laughs> I just think with them being able to put away the uh, right. number one seed and get the bye with his toe, he's going to do it. By the way, since we're just randomly off topic, I know, it doesn't I'm matter sorry. to me. I, I don't care. What about uh, Cooper Cup at plus 18? You know, he, I, no? I want to talk about this. I'm no, I, I, I know who the MVP is. I'm sorry, Joe, you go. I, I, want, to, I want to chime in here because this is this is hilarious. It's like you know, three guys are used to running shows trying to stop asking questions. <laughs> I know. That's I, know. The thing. I want that to be the description of this podcast. Uh, John, if you're, if you're listening, which probably by now you stopped. John, our producer, if you're still listening to this show, please make that the description of the podcast. But the Cooper Cup thing is always fascinating because a few years ago, I made the case of Antonio Brown for MVP because you have to ask yourself, does the wide receiver make the quarterback better or is the quarterback making the wide receiver better? And I thought with Antonio Brown in his peak a few years ago, he made Ben Roethlisberger better. And that, and I stand by that. I That's think now we take. have more perspective. And I think that was probably the correct assumption there. This one is difficult because... Matthew Stafford is a very good quarterback that has not gotten the credit he deserves because he's played in obscurity in Detroit and he's never had great teams necessarily. He's had some good ones, but certainly not consistently good. Cooper Cup getting MVP votes would not bother me. Jonathan Taylor for the, what are they now, eight of the last 10 games they've won, the Colts? I mean, you can basically put that win streak here on Jonathan Taylor and how good he's yep. been. 
but it is so difficult. You have to go back to what was it? Sean Alexander, the last guy at the top of my head who won an MVP. Was that like Oh five? I want to say or something like you got to go back to like Sean Alexander who won an MVP. The last time they gave it to a non quarterback. Right. And but, I could but be guess wrong, what? but that's like the last one. I remember maybe uh, LT won it. I don't, I'm forgetting. I'm, I'm, forgetting. I'm looking it up here. Um, it was Adrian Peter. Is it Adrian Peterson, oh, Peterson in 2012? Ladanian yeah, in 2006. Sean Alexander, 2005, and Marshall okay. Falk in 2000. But you're you're making the, the argument guys. that I think here. <laughs> yeah, this is the argument that I think, though. There's no chance the media can look at themselves in the face with how Tom Brady's been playing and vote another quarterback over Aaron Rodgers. So where do you go? you got to go out of position. And there was a couple weeks ago, a lot of the NFL was putting out stats of the pacing of the last four running backs to win MVP and where Jonathan Taylor was. And he's on that and beyond. He's going to go in with a 20 plus touchdown season. He's going to have all the yards in the world. He has the narrative of how he's carried the Colts. I think the Jonathan Taylor take is the one for the media to push to because he's paced out. They can go and say, Hey, look, Jonathan Taylor, is doing as much or more than all the running backs who have won the award before, and that's and also the team is winning. He is the bet to me right now. Go take your plus six hundred or wherever it is and place that because there's no way the media gives it to Rodgers, even though he deserves it, and they have a scapegoat in Jonathan Taylor on a winning team that he is carrying and he is putting up stats even better than previous running back MVPs. It's crazy we got on this tangent, but you just sparked it in me because I'm well, the only one I mean, I've heard say that about Rodgers. you want to talk about streaming kickers, honestly? <laughs> I don't! I don't! Please, Hold no. on. I have I have two things to say. Number one, uh, I just want to point it out to you, Well, so you can get going. Before he dominates as the running back this week for Kansas City, that Derek Carr is still plus uh, 50,000 to win the MVP <laughs> on DraftKings. So go ahead and get that because he's going to – Dang it. There's your, there's your running back. I knew that you, you were quiet from. for a reason. I knew it was like something Dan's going to have here. No, I can't here. interrupt we'll the rad for the people who wanted waiver wire, and instead we all went crazy with MVP talk and stuff. Uh, yeah. The other thing I will say is that Schefter just tweeted out, that Edward Zolaire, again, is considered week to week with a bruised shoulder and that it's going to be challenging for him to play on Sunday against Cincinnati. So no no earth-shattering news here. None of us is expecting him to play, but Hashtag sounds like he probably car. will be out. All right, let's bring Derek, it back yeah, to get the Derek car. Good job, Dan. Way to, way to bring it back to the Thanks. Good job. Here. That's a real uh, host. Next. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, quarterback here. We got Mac Jones, maybe Justin Fields. You've got Tua Tungavailoa, Dan Harris. Is there a favorite streaming quarterback for you this week? No. If you have to stream at quarterback, right. you are dead. I'm glad we filled uh, the show then with lots of other stuff. because but I, That's right. No I will say, no if you help. have to go one of them, I guess Tua. Go. Have fun. I hope he does well. See, if I have to go one, I'm going to go Mac Jones against Jacksonville. Uh, there, is zero, there is a 0.0% chance that I am starting Mac Jones uh, in the finals of a Not league. A I would start league, you. But I, I think if you're in, in Superflex and for some reason somebody dropped Mac Jones one week or something like that and he was floating out there, I, I can see it. All you right. know why I, we can move on? Because I was going to say Justin Fields at this point because <laughs> of the Fields legs. Is, theoretically, so, Fields is the play, best one. Correct. Yeah, it's but the, the best, problem it's is, the best yeah. one. It's in theory because you have Foles coming Nick out with Foles a victory. after that one, you know? Yeah, so, you have you Foles go. coming out with a victory, and then all of a sudden, you know, and, and you got to love Nick Foles, right? The guy, he can't win a game in week four, but man, you put all the money on the line, and like, you know, it's like, let's send him into the snow in Seattle in week 16, and there, yeah. there's Nick Foles showing up. It's unbelievable, yeah. that guy. It's like, oh, my goodness. All right, let's talk about tight ends then. Is there a tight end Welsh for you that you feel interested in you got Cole Komet at 35 percent Tyler Conklin at 42 Gerald Everett still floating around there hovering around the 30 percent mark anybody else for you man I mean James O'Sonnesy has kind of been interesting he keeps like week in and week out picking up four catches here or there I like Tyler Conklin uh what I don't like is, you know, how KJ Osborne has jumped into the offense. And if you have a Thielen back out there, if, if Thielen is not there, I feel a little bit more confident about Conklin just be as him playing kind of a safety net. Um, but I don't really like a whole lot of these like mm -hmm. Everett O'Shaughnessy. I think I'm out on Komet. I mean, cause you know, when they don't go to Komet, they're going to Jimmy Graham. So no, thank you. Evan Ingram is a two catch per game type of guy. Uh, he's almost just kind of disappeared. James O'Shaughnessy and Con O'Shaughnessy is sneaky. Conklin is probably the play. All right, let's uh, move on to Dan. Your thoughts on tight end here this week? Yeah, nah, whatever. Um, I mean, I guess... It's a good uh, thing Oshansi, we had all that way, filler because you guys we, are I, really laying saying. here we, at the end. This could have been a 20-minute show if we did if we had to actually talk waiver wire for the But it the wouldn't have been time. as entertaining, Dan. That's, That's well, for some people. Um, O'Shaughnessy, by the way, yesterday, Yates was pointing this out as well. He did limp off at one point. I didn't see if he came back into the game, so just monitor that um, because he, he is certainly one of the guys. I'm fine with Komet. He's got at least five targets in five straight games. Everett obviously had the nice game. Tyler Conklin without 
you know, uh, Thielen is fine. But realistically, no. There, there's got to be somebody better. But okay. if I had to pick, it would be probably if Oshansi is healthy, him. If not, then uh, Komet. All right, top waiver wire ads for Week 17 for those of you playing either Consolation or Championship games. Boston Scott, number one for me. I'm still going to go with Gore for two for now. Again, that's a for now here as we continue to monitor some other situations, but I'm starting to get that feeling that Gore might be more useful, especially in those PPR leagues as Welsh mentioned. KJ Osborne is my three because I'm just not confident in Thielen. Uh, And also, once again, I keep coming back to the insurance policy when it comes to Osborne. Four is Bateman for me. And then the Tennessee Titans defense. We're going to talk more defense in a second here. I think they're worth an ad against Miami. The offensive line's not very good. I think Tennessee's starting to uh, get itself back together again after some very trying times. And I think defensively, this is a good matchup for them. And again, they're at home this week too. So those are my top five waiver wire ads. Dan Harris, who is your top five? I'm going to Dare, uh, and then I'm going to Boston Scott and Jordan Howard right after that until we get some clarity, but Scott would be number two. I'll go with KJ Osborne at four, and then I'm just going by myself here with Joshua Palmer at number five. All right, very good. Welsh, your top five waiver wire ads for this week. I think 1A, 1B is Boston Scott, Derek Gore. Uh, Those would be my 1A, 1B. (laughs) (laughs) Derek Carr, sorry. Uh, Number three, I'm going to go with uh, Darren Gumbawale, uh, just, you know, simply from a volume perspective, uh, though I think there's a big kind of a tear drop here. Uh, Four and five, man, I'd probably go Rashad Bateman and MVS. I would put MVS at four if we do get a whole lot of clarity in that spot as far as what's going wide out. And I would also if we get clarity on the Cole Beasley situation if we got both of those MVS and Isaiah McKenzie would be the two wide receivers I would put with those three running backs so Scott Gore Dare and then let's just call it MVS and McKenzie all right let's talk about defense I already made my bones and made my uh, point here about Tennessee Welsh is there a defense that you feel good about streaming this week in the championship week uh, I kind of like the Bears uh, against the Giants. The Giants don't know what the hell they're doing. They got one. Jake Fromm out there. They got Mike Glenn. And they're running an unintentional Carolina rotation of quarterbacks just because these guys don't know what they're doing. They looked awful. They have no wide receivers. Saquon, I don't even think – got to be honest with you guys. I don't yes. know how you feel. I don't think Saquon's startable in your championship week it's if tough. you even had him and you're there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Giants look – uh, atrocious. I think they've packed it in. The Bears are still fighting. Fields gets back out there. I think the Bears, uh, where you're talking about waiver wire on Tennessee, I think the Bears are number two here, and they're probably just free to go and play with. So I'll take the Bears. Bears also very good one here. Jake Fromm was not inspiring uh, yesterday, <laughs> to say the least. I'm trying to be, you know, you know trying to be, uh, you know, kind. euphemistic. I like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Turning you're over fine. a new leaf for 2022. Okay. We'll see how long it lasts. That's uh, a good host. <laughs> Dan Harris, streaming defense of the week for you. It's the Bears as well. Again, it's Jake Fromm or Mike Lennon. It does not matter. Um, it is uh, beautiful for opposing DSTs at this point. So I will go with the Bears. It's really, to me, the one that you can go after this week if you are if you are struggling at DST. That's where I'd go. All right. Next is kicker Dan Harris. The floor oh. is yours. We need Yates. We need most accurate I know. Kicker. We need the most. And by the way, I want to thank everybody who listened last week for sending their kicker questions to Yates at yes. Kyle Y NFL. Again, that's. Yep. Kyle Y NFL for all of your kicker questions. He is so incredible at ranking kickers every single week. So this is the week here. Keep sending him. Even after football's over, just keep asking him kicker questions, please. But Dan, in the meantime, while Kyle's not here, give us your streaming kicker of the week. Very quickly, uh, the Bucks have placed Mike Evans on the COVID-19 reserve list. Again, he's, who knows if he was going to play, but it's coming across mm-hmm. the wire now. We got to alert the audience. Ah, uh, Dustin news, Hopkins. News. Dustin Hopkins, who at one point I tried to use in my bad kicker league, Joe, that you know, that charity love league. The bad kicker but league. he's apparently a good kicker now. So uh, he's going to be fine against Denver, who, again, has a good defense where they can move the ball. And then Mason Crosby uh, against Minnesota in, you know, MVP Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to move that ball and uh, and get some, some kicks there. But I would go Hopkins is my number one for sure. Welsh, kicker for you? I like Hopkins. Um, I, w- I would agree with that. I think Crosby is a solid option. I like Evan McPherson. Again, I think that Kansas City yeah. game is going to be a shootout, yeah. so your floor is probably a whole bunch of extra points with your ceiling being one or two, especially ineffective drives that could get field goals in. So I think that's a really nice, uh, you know, how, how often are you playing upside with kickers, I suppose? So I'll even take high offensive upside. So I really like McPherson. McPherson was my number one, too, because that same thing. I like playing the total, but I also think if you're looking at how Kansas City defensively has played, maybe stalling out on drives and settling for exactly instead of six yeah that's exactly no, that's why i like mcpherson the most this yep. week so that's my guy too dan would know that too if you ever looked at a show sheet speaking <laughs> of mvps 
Welsh, you're the real MVP. You can follow <laughs> oh. him on the Twitter machine at is it the Welsh, and please go check out the Patreon page for in this league. It's Bogman, it's Welsh, it's all your friends. They do great work. They do multiple sports, and baseball is coming around the corner. Also, check out Welsh's work in the new Black Book with all the draft strategies out there for the baseball book. Welsh. Uh, it's been great having you on the show. What else you guys got cooking over at ITL? Oh, that's it. I mean, uh, we did our Christmas special on our Patreon in this league.com. Both of you fine gentlemen did intro videos for us. Uh, we had a fantastic that we just like to have fun. I mean, that's, you know, the fun and fantasy stuff has always been really important to us. And this league.com takes you to our Patreon. We got all the podcasts, uh, prospect one going on lots of dynasty and ba- I mean, baseball is about to take full, full throttle and Bogman also, and I do a uh, betting show on our football feed as well. So full stop shop whatever you want to call it if you dig in this league just uh, come and check it out i love you both thank you for letting Aww. me derail the podcast and <laughs> go on to mvp stuff and just you know thank you for letting me be me guys i love you <laughs> well you put the fun in fantasy and dan puts the antsy in fantasy yeah i'll take it lots, <laughs> lots of antsy in there uh, also i want to remind everybody please uh do something nice get yourself some nice piece of apparel over at fantasypros.com slash shop again you can support uh, our friend Mike Taglier's family. All the proceeds from the apparel at the Remembering Mike Taglier collection go directly to Tags' family. So, again, that's fantasypros.com slash shop. Also, check out Trophy Smack. I showed you my amazing belt. Go get one of your own and uh, reward the Fantasy Football Leagues. Have fun. This Fantasy Football is supposed to be fun. It's a good it's time. They've be. got all kinds of cool stuff there, too. And I'm telling you, the Trophy Smack championship belts are the highest quality they are totally worth the investment and they're not as crazy as you think everybody chips in you know 15 20 bucks next thing you know you got something really cool to give away there also don't forget fantasypros.com slash contest subscribe to our youtube channel screenshot that bad boy and then go over to fantasypros.com slash contest thanks to our friends at pristine auction we are giving away an alvin Kamara jersey and Alvin Kamara may or may not ruin Dan Harris's hopes of advancing uh, into mm. his uh, championship week. Uh, so we'll see how that goes for him tonight. And I'll be watching now and rooting uh, against it. I, I don't want Alvin Kamara to be Dan yet. I want to wait for Justin Boone and him to square off so I can watch yeah. on Twitter a full week of them going at it. That's all I want. It's going to be a beatdown from him to I'm me. He's going to destroy me. Yeah. I'm the fantasy Loki. I just want chaos. That's all I want. That's all I asked for for Christmas. And I, I, I got it this year. So that'll do it for us, but the story of the game goes on for Welsh and Dan Harris. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.